Zygu G106. Everybody else has talked about it. I've talked about it. I had the opportunity to get my hands on the prototype radio that Mike was sent. And I traded emails with Radioddity about that radio, and I declined it. I said, no, thank you. I don't really want a prototype radio. Kind of glad I didn't do that now. I don't have any interest in reviewing a prototype radio, something that's never going to be in the hands of you, the viewer. I don't blame Mike for doing it. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that Radioddity had given me the opportunity to do that, and I declined it because I knew there would be problems with it. I had no idea there would be that many problems with it, but... Here we are. So this is a production model. This is a production model, and it is a loaner. They sent, Radioddity sent me this radio, and they said, when you're done with it, let us know, and we're going to have you send it to the next guy, whoever that is. They don't, I, I don't know who that is. I said, sure, that's fine, no problem. I suppose I could keep this radio if I wanted to, have no desire to do so. Honestly, I don't understand the appeal of this radio. And I'm not saying it's no good. I'm not saying that the production model is terrible. I'm not saying that they're all going to be like that one Mike had. I'm saying I don't understand why anyone would want this. The only selling feature in my mind is the price point. $319 for this semi-capable radio. I mean, it does upper and lower sideband. It does CW. It says that it is FT8. It supports FT8 with a DE19 expansion card. This is a Delta Echo 19. The expansion card that works on like the uh, the the G90 and the X108G and the what other one was it? The X105. This called a CE19. It's got a USB-C port on it right there. This is the upgraded version of the interface expansion card that goes between the radio and the computer because the radio itself does not have a built-in sound card. I was very impressed with the X6100 that I did buy from Radioddity and kept for my own because it had a built-in sound card and it had a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all, a bunch of other bells and whistles. I've got something to say about that radio, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. The list of features on this radio is high-performance SDR infrastructure, compact and robust physical structure, coverage of all HF amateur radio bands between 3.5 and 29.7 megahertz. So basically that's 80 meters up to 10 meters FM. Whether, uh, whether FM broadcast received coverage or wide FM broadcast received coverage, so regular car stereo FM stations, continuous received coverage across all HF frequencies. So even where, so it's like DC to daylight basically, 3.5 megahertz and up to, uh, up to almost 30 megahertz uh, received coverage, continuous received coverage, so it claims. One year warranty on the G106 as usual. If you modify the radio's hardware, warranty is voided. That's pretty pretty standard, really. Honestly, I thought it sounded pretty good on CW just then. So, but this is the radio. It's pretty small. The screen is small. The screen's probably even smaller than the G90 screen. It's not color. It's not a color screen. It's a monochrome screen. Okay, so it's small here. It's got a speaker in the top, which is sort of loud. Not really loud, but it's sort of loud. It's got your mode selectors here. This is the, power, the red button is the power button here. This is how you change modes right here. And then this is the band up and down button right here. You can do band up and down right there. It's, uh, this is your volume button. If you press this button in while you're listening, it does mute the radio, so it's easy to mute if you get a phone call or whatever. Uh, this is your tuning knob, obviously. This is a four-button menu system that when you press in the tuning knob, it will... Well, you press any of these buttons or the tuning knob, it'll bring up the menu. Then you can select whichever from the menu by pressing one of these buttons, or it's menu one of five, and you can change from two to five, three to five, and all that by turning the tuning knob. On the back here, it is a BNC connector. There's a ground port. Okay, there's a key, a 3.5 millimeter plug for key, a 3.5 millimeter for communications port, which is which is presumably your computer interface, and then an accessory port, which is the old round modular, looks like an old uh, ICOM or maybe an old Kenwood connector accessory port there. And it didn't come with that plug. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. With one of the accessory port plugs is used for the DE19. That's what that guy right, is right there. And then, of course, it has DCN between 9 and 16 volts. And it matches 
the IC705 cable because it's positive on the inside circle and negative on the outside circle. So I read that. I was like, you know what? This matches the IC705 cable. Plugged it up. I didn't even use the cable that came with the Zygu. I used the 705 cable because I already had power poles on that. And since I'm sending this radio off, I didn't want to modify that cable. It's got a small, smaller than RJ11 looking phone cord port right there for the microphone. Looks like a TYT microphone. Probably is a TYT microphone. Let's hook it up. Uh, look, see what it looks like on receive only. And I want to do some keying up of CW with it because that was one of the things on Mike's video where they it would key up and would splatter over about a 6 kilohertz wide segment. Zygu is the one who makes this radio. Shagu, or however you're supposed to say it. Radioddity is the one who sent it to me. And Radioddity has been very supportive. You can uh, save a $15 discount off of any purchase at radioddity.com of $65 or more with the coupon code in the description below. Not just this radio but anything on Radioddity, most anything on Radioddity.com. So here we are. Let's look at it on the, with the power up again. Okay, there it is on 20 meters. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon right now, so 20 meters should be pretty, pretty good. But I don't know how to change this. This one is highlighted right here. This is, this middle one's highlighted. This middle number 290 is highlighted right here. When I change it, that's the one that changes. I don't know how to change away from that. I'm sure I could look in the manual. There we go. There's some activity. Filtering is not great, but it's a $300 radio. What do you expect? All right, so I can't hear net control, but I hear that guy calling back to him. It's got some snap, crackle, pop in the speaker. Um, I didn't see a port on the back of it for an external speaker. Maybe I missed it. I do not see a port for connecting an external speaker. That's kind of lame. Oh, well. But uh, there it is. So earlier we were on CW, and of course it changes the highlighted space on the frequency counter to there when it goes to CW. There's got to be a way to change that, guys. I just don't know what it is. There we go. All right, I don't want to interrupt these guys' conversation. I've got my Zen Light 2 from N3 Zen Keys. Really nice looking key. I'm not used to this capacitive touch paddle, obviously. But you don't see it splattering the way that the one that Mike had was splattering all over the band. You don't really see that going, so that's that's good. That's good that you don't see that going on the on the scope right there. I'm just gonna key down the DAW. It doesn't splatter all over the place. There you go. And there it is right there. <laughs> so it doesn't splatter on CW the way that the old one did, or the way that the prototype did. I should say that. And uh, I called CQ and threw my call sign out. Nobody's coming back to me. That's okay. That's all right. It's, it's doing like probably five watts right now. I don't have the meter hooked up to it, so I don't really know what it's doing. All right. So I think that the prognosis that I would give this thing is that it is much improved over the prototype, the pre-production prototype that both Mike and Josh had. The thing I haven't liked about radio, uh, about Zygu lately is that they stopped making firmware. I had high hopes for that X6100, and for the most part, it's a good radio, but they stopped, but they haven't released firmware on it in several months, and now they, they downgrade themselves to this uh, very lackluster, what I would call a very lackluster radio. No built-in sound card, no real waterfall. It's got a scope on it, but not really a waterfall. No color screen, obviously. A very small screen. Not many bells and whistles at all. And I that Zygu 6100 could have been really, re a really, really... And it's not a bad radio, but it could have had a very good following if they would have just kept working on the firmware. So 
I don't know. Maybe I'll talk about that more in a future video. What do you guys think about this radio? Is anyone interested in it? At $319, you basically get what you pay for. And it would probably work for you. I don't think I'd be interested in it. I think I'd rather have a G90, which is almost tw not quite twice the price. About another 100 150 bucks. Uh, more power. This one's only 5 watts. A G90 is uh, 20 watts. I don't know. I, I, I'd definitely rather have a 6100 than this one if I was going to do digital modes. So, and digital modes are more fun on QRP than, uh, than sideband is, although CW is more fun on, Q, on uh, QRP than sideband is as well, which is one reason I'm trying to learn more CW. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. It, does this radio interest you at all? What do you think about it? Uh, thanks for watching today, and check the link in the description below for the link to Radioidity's website to save that $15 off of $65 or more purchase, radioidity.com 73.